amidst campaign promises from President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, as well as post-war hopes for a better Liberia, Liberians look forward to Delta Airlines and others coming to Liberia to do business. Many Liberians, however, do not know that before Delta Airlines commenced flights in Liberia in September of 2010, the U.S. government provided $3.4 million to the Liberian government to rehabilitate the airport and bring it up to standards. Today, four years later, and without accountability for the funds, the airport is not up to standards. The runway still has cracks and potholes, bathrooms are still deplorable and do not flush, and the power supply is unstable, creating frequent blackouts, power outages at crucial times when airlines are either landing or taking off. In May of 2012, Air France Airlines' brand new AF752 plane nearly crashed in Liberia due to the poor runway and dilapidated conditions. The plane's bottom right, main landing gear, hydraulic hoses, brakes, and right main landing gear axle assembly were damaged. Air France had to unexpectedly deplane their in-transit passengers, provide emergency lodging, order the parts from overseas, make the necessary repairs on site at the airport, and about two days later, fly their in-transit passengers to their originally intended destinations. Air France suffered over $500,000 of loss as a result. The following month, in June of 2012, and amidst safety pressures from the Air France situation and other near crashes, Delta Airlines gave Liberia another $1 million in safety equipment and technical know-how. Specifically, Delta Flight tested and installed an RNAV GPS system, leaving Liberia to only pay for the subscription to publish it. In November of 2012, there was yet another near catastrophe involving Air France Airlines. As a result of the poor condition of the run and taxiways, airlines are forced to try and maneuver around potholes, cracks, and in tight spaces. Air France Airlines, while trying to maneuver around these potholes, cracks, and tight spaces, the aircraft's nose wheel ran off the runway and into the thick mud at the shoulder of the pavement. This again caused tremendous embarrassment to Air France, its in-transit passengers, and especially to Liberia, as it proved that we did not have the proper safety conditions and equipment at the airport. Because of safety concerns, as well as concerns that Delta, Air France, and others would become discouraged with President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf's government's corruption, lack of safety standards, and failure to address their grievances, just Johnson and Ellen Quokram made numerous efforts to get the president to address these concerns, but to no avail. In February of 2013, a CN-35 aircraft carrying 11 Guinean officials crashed at the airport. A year and a half later, the government of Liberia is still yet to conclude its investigation of the crash. In the recording to follow, you will hear the president, her minister of state for presidential affairs, and the deputy minister basically ignore these same concerns. In fact, they continue to somehow stress that airport safety is only necessary when conditions are perfect, when in fact conditions are often not perfect in Liberia. Today, it is no surprise to Judge Johnson and Ellen Quokram that Air France, Delta, and others have abandoned Liberia and more are contemplating leaving. Judge Johnson and Ellen Quokram had numerous meetings with these businesses and attempted to bring their concerns to the president but she and her corruption clique ignored it. Please listen. I have 
had a meeting with Delta. In addition to that, there was a NAV A that was put in by Delta when it first came in, but they have not published it for where pilots can see it. So it is almost like it doesn't exist. Okay, what did what the, what the what? What Delta did uh -huh. was the GPS mapping of all approaches to the route. Yeah. And then it came a flight test that is visible. So we can flight test it ourselves and then publish it. And that has to be done. And what it does. So what do we need to do to do it then? RG needs to 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 do it. But it means that as long as there's good visibility, uh -huh. you don't even need anything else. But you don't always have good this, right? So it does uh -huh. Like Judy was just saying, it's already been flight tested, but no other pilots know that it's there except for Delta. Well, because the thing is, Delta can come. Delta cannot even publish it because the flightability no. faster. Right, they're saying we are supposed to. So Because right now we've only got one approach coming into RIA, which is the ILS, even though the GPS has been flight tested by Delta. That's because most of the problems occur. Mm -hmm. Zach, you understand what I'm saying? So, so Zach, let me explain what it is, right? You, you listen? The, um, anything we do for NAV8, so public, to publish an approach, there's a sheet about this site that, that's put into the, um, the pilot set for, for them to know what they can fly. So, in addition to all this NAV8 stuff, we have another approach that gives us better visibility to come down when we've got low visibility issues that Delta has already flight tested. Actually, from my understanding what I learned this past few days now is that it's in their hands, but it needs to be flight tested by us and then published. Because right now the pilots cannot see this sheet in their approach playbook for RIA. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that was that was all right. Last time we saw, we see a blue sky when the end of the week. A whole week has passed. We're coming into another end of another week. But the people are working on the air on the wrong way now. Yeah, my friend, they don't have the right composition. So what happened this past week? They actually started putting rocks in the use of the What? Any aircraft coming to touch on it, there was a vacuum under that could cause it to sink. So they can go to do the technical steps. That's correct. Yeah. I think right. Lisa was there, right? Yeah. Lisa was there, right? He did. He did. Yeah. Because he told me he was going to run away and yeah. everything was just more serious and more yeah. thing. That's why he was going to be there. Yeah. That's all of the uh, quotations done and everything. You already got the bank details. So got to hurry up and get that consultancy so they can be there. Because afterwards they have to, what is it constructed? They have to present. They have to present the proof that they have been done to spec. Certify it. After that, they have to certify it. My thing is, um, we're so much in, a, in an emergency situation. I don't know what arrangements, according to what I see, the banking details are there, the people getting cool feet. That we, we said we're going to send them 40% first, and we haven't sent anything. And all of that stuff. Yeah. I don't want it to go ahead longer than is necessary. I'm seeing instead of going to all the you know, I that one price and then do a supplementary one. Right. That's what I'm saying. Send that money to the yeah. board. Yeah. 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 So right now we're waiting for the test results for the composition because if we do any of this arbitrary test, we do have like a test results. So actually the engineers were already here last week. And about three weeks ago, so they got the test going now to find out what kind of composition we need. Because SSF doesn't have a the composition, they don't have the technical expertise for it, and we're expecting the test results this week. In the meantime, they just went and cover it with rocks and asphalt, and that cannot hold long term. In addition to that, I had a meeting with Delta, I think it was on either Thursday or Friday, and learned that we may need to add an additional piece for the NAVI because they've already tested what we call the GPS navigation into the runway. That has been completed Delta Field one. Pilots cannot see it because that is in our two hands. So what if there is an additional money that we need to add to this 3.2? Because that one is already done. So that's the effort of what's coming since they're not part of Delta. They would know. You know, you have a sheet in your approach place where can tell you when it's got this kind of visibility, you can fly this approach and come into the runway. So we have to add that in as well. So that's the problem.
That means going and landing with all this the other thing anyway. If we have to fly and to do a put it back in the headset or handset or whatever they can see it, that's just yeah. an addition. Please note that in addition to Minister McLean's dismissal of the importance of airlines' safety and its embarrassing gibberish, the president also shows lack of interest and shifts to her impending infamous Europe and Asia one-month travel plans. Who's coordinating the meetings with the, with the Indonesia dynasty? Uh, MFA, let me check. MFA. Oh. Who specifically? Uh, CA. Oh, God. Okay. What? Was that who finished? Yeah. Yeah, but I should have hired no one. Great, great. All right, your people are on the ground. Everything seems to be going well. Did you hear how disinterested President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and her ministers were in discussing these issues? Did you hear them say that the safety concerns and grievances of Delta and others are only relevant when it's raining or dark in Liberia, when half of the time it is raining and dark in Liberia? Did you notice the lack of interest and urgency to the issues by the president and her ministers? It is no surprise to Judge Johnson and Ellen Quokram that Air France announced and gave up on Liberia in May 2014. Delta Airlines announced and gave up on Liberia in July 2014. USAID announced and gave up on Liberia regarding the Swakoko Bump County Hydro Plant in July 2014. Numerous NGOs are also pulling out of Liberia. With the only international airport, the gateway to Liberia, the first place that foreigners and potential investors see about Liberia, still unrepaired and dilapidated, and President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and her corruption clique government uninterested, Liberia continues to plummet downhill fast. Please look at these pictures that depict some of the horrific conditions of the airport. Of the illustrations are pictures of the condition of the airport. More specifically, as you see, these are pictures of a very deteriorated condition of the airport run and taxiways. Obviously, these are dangerous conditions here at the airport that can lead to catastrophe. As long as Liberia continues to be ruled by a corrupt and uninterested president and corruption clique, they may continue to talk the good talk and fool some of our people, but the international business community is not fooled. They are leaving Liberia. After spending $4.4 million for airport improvements, there is no improvements. Delta Airlines is not fooled. After two near crashes, tremendous business reputational and customers embarrassment, Air France Airlines is not fooled. After the crash of the Guinean Airlines with 11 fatalities, the Guinean and Ekowa communities are not fooled. After millions of unaccounted for funds, rampant corruption amongst the corruption clique with impunity, thousands of ghost employees in schools, USAID is now not fooled. With about six more NGAs reportedly closing their doors in the next 30 days, they too are not fooled. We must continue to pray for and fight for the cause of Mama Liberia. May God bless Mama Liberia.